morning everybody, how are y'all doing today? I'm doing pretty good myself because it would appear that I triggered one of the PlayStation fanboys who I was responding to in my last video, reading through comments of salty PlayStation fanboys on my video about JTEC TV not understanding how consoles can survive without exclusives. But yeah, anyway, me and this dude went back and forth for a while. He hasn't responded to my most recent comment in a couple hours, so I figured hey what better time to make a video covering the situation than right now because I'm pretty sure I said this in my last video but like, there's not really much going on in the gaming industry right now there's not really many fanboys acting up over anything so I gotta take every opportunity I can to make videos for you guys and luckily this guy has blessed us with more than enough fanboy salt to make a video on I think there's about 14 or 15 total comments where me and this dude were just going back and forth. So yeah, without keeping this intro any longer, let's go ahead and start reading. At KlutzyKing552, you call me a fanboy in this video? Triple question mark, laughing face emoji. Says the one who is trashing PS and its fanbase in his videos, defending Game Pass and damage controlling for Xbox having no games. Laughing face emoji times three. And the respond on your last comment, well duh, of course you don't need Xbox to subscribe to Game Pass. Anyone knows this. And for this reason, also you don't need an Xbox Xbox at all if you have a PC. And it's funny how you mention how well all those PS exclusives sold, and that's not even all the exclusives. PS has way more exclusives than what you mentioned, and for this reason, it's why PS sells more than the Xbox, and PS exclusives takes two years to go to PC. Well, to respond to the first of your three paragraph essay, I do not trash the PlayStation fan base in any of my videos. I trash PlayStation fanboys, and I only ever trash the PlayStation when they've done something to warrant being trashed. Like, you know, back when they first announced the new PS Plus stuff, it didn't look that good at the time. So naturally, I trashed it. So did a ton of other people on YouTube. But clearly, you missed one of my recent videos where I gave it praise and said it's good, healthy competition for Game Pass, and I'm excited for it. And it might incite me to actually buy a PS5. But no, I guess you missed that part, didn't you? But now let's move on to the second paragraph. It's If it's so obvious that you don't need an Xbox to get Game Pass, then how come in one of your comments on my last video, why did you say that Microsoft was forcing you to buy an Xbox and forcing you to buy Game Pass? Like, why did you say that if it's completely optional and by your own admission, you don't have to buy it? And you know what? You're absolutely right. You don't need an Xbox if you have a PC. But my point in my original video was that a lot of people are just casual gamers who either don't want to play on PC or who can't afford it. So by this logic, if we reverse it, yes, if you have a PC, you don't need an Xbox. But if you have an Xbox, you don't necessarily need a PC either. Can we just appreciate the last paragraph real quick? Because if you guys haven't watched my previous video, please go watch it. It's really funny, actually. But basically, in that video, he asked me to give him the sales numbers of a lot of PlayStation exclusives besides God of War. So I did. I did. What did I do? I did God of War, Spider-Man, Spider-Man Malice Morales, Horizon Zero Dawn, uh, Gran Turismo, I think. I, I don't exactly remember, but I mentioned a ton of PlayStation exclusives, most of which were the best selling of all the PlayStation exclusives. But now, apparently, because that didn't prove his point, now that's not good enough. And now he wants me to bring up even more PlayStation exclusive sales numbers, even though that would only hurt his point even more because I already mentioned the best selling PlayStation exclusives ever made, including God of War, Spider Man, and Horizon and zero dawn and that's the thing with fanboys when something doesn't work out for them they shift the goalpost which you'll notice that a lot throughout these comments but also the whole thing about playstation exclusives taking two years to go to pc uh i don't know about that one in the future bud because you know sony just recently started porting games to pc but i guarantee as time goes on we're gonna start getting PC ports of games closer and closer to their release and eventually I wouldn't be surprised if PlayStation launches their exclusives on PC I mean didn't they do that with Sifu like correct me if I'm wrong but isn't Sifu a PlayStation exclusive that they launched on PC as well 
But continuing on here, I simply replied with, did I hit a nerve? And this was a genuine question, because honestly, this dude sounded so salty in this reply that I was honestly concerned for his health. So I had to just check in on him and make sure he was all good. And then he replied with, at KlutzyKing552, it seems I did hit a nerve. That's why you made a video about me, laughing face emoji times three. To which I then responded, nah, I thought it would just make for a good quick video. So thanks for the free content. Also, if you can name one PS4 exclusive that sold more than 20 million copies, please feel free to let me know. And I genuinely meant this because I had done a lot of research just to make sure I wasn't off the mark or anything. And from what I know, I actually got this wrong in my last video, but uh, I think Spider-Man is the best selling PS4 exclusive of all time. And it sold 20 million for some reason. When I did my research for the last video, it came up as 7.5 million, but I may have gotten that confused with Miles Morales. Anyway, yeah, as far as I'm aware, Spider-Man is the best-selling PS4 exclusive of all time with 20 million units, which I've pointed out time and time again, that is only an attach rate of one copy sold for every six co like consoles purchased, which honestly, that in itself should probably prove that exclusives barely matter at all when it comes to selling consoles. But anyway, let's continue on here. He then replies with, at KlutzyKing552, yeah, sure, by making a video about me proves my point. You are defending Xbox like a Xbox fanboy. First of all, 10 out of 10 grammar right there, a Xbox fanboy. But I really just love this logic because I'm pointing out a fact that Xbox doesn't need good exclusives to be successful. That apparently makes me an Xbox fanboy. But apparently, you know, when this guy defends PlayStation, that doesn't make him a PlayStation fanboy. It's a little interesting how that works. But anyway, continuing on, I responded with, even combining the top 10 best-selling PS4 exclusives ever, all of them total come out to be just as many sold as PS4 units. How does that prove exclusives sold consoles? If exclusives mattered as much as you're saying, each of the top 10 best sellers would have each sold as many copies as there are PS4s. Also, if exclusives are truly what sell consoles, then why do third-party games sell better than PlayStation exclusives? And you know, I think these were some pretty solid points right here, but some thing I did forget to mention is also if exclusive games matter so much, then why is Sony starting to port their exclusives over to PC? You claim that exclusive games are so necessary for a console success, but if that's true, why did Xbox port all their games over to PC a while ago, and why is PlayStation now porting all their exclusives over to PC? Because if exclusives are truly what sell consoles besides the Switch, then they wouldn't be porting any games over because then they would be losing sales on consoles, right? But that's not what's happening. But now continuing on, he replies, at KlutzyKing552, you are using typical Xbox fanboys logic because you are defending the fact that Xbox has no games, SMH. It's because of the lack of exclusives Xbox One sold poorly. Uncharted series sells consoles, Bloodborne sells consoles, Horizon Zero Dawn and Horizon Forbidden West sells consoles, Gran Turismo sells consoles, Demon Souls sells consoles, Spider-Man sells console, and now it's your turn. What sells the Xbox laughing face emoji, Bloodborne sells console. Now, before I show you guys my reply where I talked about what sells Xbox for a lot of people, can we just appreciate the fact that A, this dude clearly never watched my original two videos where I explained what sells Xbox besides the exclusives? And also, can we just appreciate the fact that this man, even after I show him clear cut evidence, that PlayStation is not sold solely because of exclusives. He's still trying to claim that these games are what specifically sold the console. Because again, like I've said this multiple times now, I'm not saying that exclusives don't sell consoles, period, because I've mentioned this before. I have a friend who literally bought a PlayStation for Spider-Man. He only bought it for the exclusive. But I just want to point something out right now. Basically, what this guy is saying is that without exclusives forcing you to buy the PlayStation, the PlayStation is not a worthy purchase. He is admitting that the only reason he would buy a PlayStation is because he's forced to buy PlayStation to play these games. He wouldn't buy them if he had the option not to. I just wanted to make that very apparent, but anyway, let's get into my reply now. 
So I responded with, Game Pass sells Xbox, the Series S being the most affordable console sells Xbox, being able to play third-party games that release for the next seven years or so sells Xbox, in some rare cases, like with PlayStation, exclusives will sell Xbox, but again, that's rare, the PlayStation sells for these reasons as well, minus Game Pass, how exactly am I a fanboy for pointing out the facts, when you're using PlayStation fanboy logic, saying exclusives are what sell consoles? If exclusives are what sell consoles, how come no PlayStation exclusive has a higher than a 1 out of 6 attach rate to console sold? And I think at this point, this is where this dude realized he was completely out of arguments and he couldn't really make up any more BS responses, so then he took the time I mentioned Game Pass in this reply as an opportunity to completely change the subject, and now pretty much for the rest of the comments, he's going to be bashing Game Pass, and you guys know how much I love it when people bash Game Pass, especially when it's PlayStation fanboys so let's go ahead and see what he said in reply to me so he responded to me saying at clutchy king 552 oh really huh can you mention all the triple a games that came to game pass day one the past two years didn't they promise every three months it's because nobody wants the xbox series s that's why there was so much available because of ps5 stock issues that's why casuals went for the xbox series s you defending a console with no games and empty promises and trashing sony and its fan base proves how much of the xbox fanboy you really are. Now can we just appreciate real quick how fast this man was able to contradict himself because literally in the second paragraph he said because nobody wants the Xbox Series S that's why there's so many available and then literally in the exact same sentence says that because of PS5 stock issues all the casuals went for the Xbox Series S. So apparently nobody wants an Xbox Series S but at the same time everybody went for an Xbox Series S. You really love to see the contradictions. Also, I'm just going to throw this out here. If exclusives matter so much and everyone wants to play Sony exclusives and it's the only console that should be successful right now besides the Switch, then how come all these people didn't just either invest the extra money to get a scalped PS5 or how come they didn't just wait it out? It's almost like what I said in the last video is true that most gamers are just casuals who just want to get a console that can play a ton of AAA games and they can just have a good time kick back and play some video games with their friends it's almost like that's what the majority of people do and it's almost like that's the ma majority of people's decision making process when it comes to getting a console but not according to this guy even though he quite literally just admitted right here that i was right about that statement also once again how am i trashing sony's fan base i'm only trashing the playstation fanboys because it's funny and it brings in the views so I then responded with, well, since you asked for it, here you go. And I basically, this is a list of a ton of AAA games that I could think of and I did some research on that released on Game Pass day one within the last two years. And I've got a pretty good list here, I would say. And then afterwards, I just said, seems like quite a few games for a console with no games. And if nobody wants an Xbox, why has it sold over 12 million units? Now, I had a slim little piece of hope that this dude might finally step out of his fanboy bubble and do some actual logical thinking and realize that what I'm saying might be true. But no, because once again, remember how I mentioned earlier he keeps switching the narrative? He switched the narrative again right here because I proved him wrong. He asked me to show him all the big AAA games that released on Game Pass Day 1 in the last two years. I gave him a huge list, and once he realized, oh crap, that's not going to work, I better change the narrative, he he did and so let's get into what he replied to me with and unfortunately this is where the conversation ended he still at the time of this video hasn't replied to what I said finally but anyway he said at Clutty King 552 wahahahahahaha please don't make me laugh laughing face emoji times three well I guess it's a bit late for that then but anyway the question was how many AAA exclusives came day one on Game Pass look at you mentioning a lot of old AAA games laughing face emoji times three. 
And then I responded with, yes, and they all came to Game Pass day one within the last two years, which is what you asked me for. PlayStation fanboy logic at its finest. Change the narrative based on what's most convenient. And I still stand by that, because if you guys look at the original question, again, he asked me to mention all the big AAA games that came to Game Pass day one within the last two years. I gave them all to him, and now he's trying to claim he was asking me how many AAA exclusive games came to day one to game pass which sorry bud that wasn't your original question you could try to change the narrative and change the question all you want but i already have the screenshot so a bit too late to go back and edit it to make me look bad now isn't it but anyway guys that's gonna just about do it for this video this was a pretty fun video to make overall and dude if you could please comment again on this video because i would love to make a third video responding to you because this has been a lot of fun in all honesty and yeah that's really all i have to say so like the video if you liked it dislike it if you didn't like it subscribe if you want to see more and I will catch you all next time.